From breakthroughs to new threats, there have been many important medical stories this year. Joining us now to go through some of the top ones is AM medical expert Dr. Marla Shapiro. What a year it's been, Marla. It, it is, and, and to narrow it down to five picks is almost impossible because there's always other stories. But some of these stories are the stories that resonated with viewers, the ones that we got the most email on, the most yeah. questions on, and, and where are we going into the future. And one of those stories is 41-year-old Patrick Hardison. Tell us about him. Such an astounding story. So just, uh, this is a firefighter, a volunteer firefighter had severe burns you know a few years ago would never have survived this injury since 2005 we've seen a dozen face transplants and he had a face transplant over 71 surgeries but the last surgery it lasted 26 hours there are no facial scars because they're down the back of his head it's paved the way for him to become functional and have his vision back so truly astounding to think about you know I hate to date myself thinking about the first heart transplant that I ever read about but now a face transplant, and this came from a 26-year-old donor uh, who was a, a cyclist who unfortunately was killed. But it's just astounding when we see what medicine can do now. Absolutely. Ebola topped a lot of news headlines yeah. uh, for a very long period of time. Big medical story. Big medical story. Firstly, I think it was a great educational role for Canadians, North Americans to recognize who is at risk for Ebola, how is it transmitted. We've now gone through 42 days, which is two of the longest incubation periods to be able to say Ebola free. So that's very exciting. Over 11,000 individuals plus killed during this period of time. And perhaps one of the most exciting things is the use of an antiviral that seemed to help with the last case, but now a Canadian vaccine, an Ebola vaccine that's been developed and when the World Health Organization tested it over 4,000 individuals who had been in contact 100% effective. How long the immunity lasts, we'll have to wait and see, but certainly in terms of future risks and, and the type of devastating numbers that we saw in these countries, hopefully we'll never see that again with this unbelievable new science leading to a Canadian vaccine. Tell us about Addy, uh, called the pink Viagra or female Viagra. So it, it, we have to uh, get uh, the world to stop calling it the pink Viagra because Viagra works entirely different than Flibanserin does, which is actually the generic name of this medication. What's exciting about this is that it's the, the first female medication designed to treat hypoactive sexual desire disorder as opposed to 26 different medications on the market for male sexuality. It reinforces the fact that some 10 to 14 percent of women have low sexual desire with distress and up until now there's been absolutely no medication. It's been very, very controversial this medication. But for me what's exciting is that it validates the diagnosis opens the door to future research, which we've not had in women's sexual health. We've heard a lot, Marl, about superbugs this year. And you're going to keep on hearing yeah. about it. This is a world crisis. Most people think that their body is resistant to the bug, but no, it's the bug that has mutated and become resistant to the antibiotics. And, uh, you know, with the indiscriminate use of antibiotics, that's what's happened. We're losing the efficacy of antibiotics. The good news is, is that scientists have found a gene that gets the bacteria that are able to mutate against polymyxins, that's, that's the latest and greatest bacteria uh, antibiotic combination. So if we can get this gene interruption to teach the bacteria how not to mutate, we may have the beginning of an answer, but we have to keep reinforcing to parents, particularly December, January, February flu season, if you don't need an antibiotic, you don't need an antibiotic. And last but not least, the new human papillomavirus. So it's opened up the door again for us to be talking about the fact that human papillomavirus has very many serotypes that cause many different types of cancer, not only only cervical, not only vaginal and vulvar, but penile, anal, head and neck cancer. Michael Douglas, you know, That's brought right. that to everybody's attention. We've seen a lot of increase in head and neck cancer. So now we've got five more cancer-causing strains that are added to this new vaccine, taking our protection rate up much higher in this cancer vaccine. And what's exciting is Quebec is the latest province that's jumped on board to immunize boys as well. So we now have several provinces in Canada, but still to spare it, hoping to see that we'll see boys being vaccinated along with girls across the country. Thanks so much for this, Merle. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too.